All right, so here we're going to look at a graphing strategy, and this is kind of our first version. We'll have another version later. All right, so step one, we're going to analyze our function f of x, and we're going to find the domain and the intercepts. Then the x-intercepts are the solutions of f of x equals 0, and the y-intercept is f of 0. Then we're going to analyze the derivative, first derivative f of x, of f of x. And we're going to find the partition numbers for the first derivative and the critical numbers of f. And we're going to construct a sign chart for the first derivative, determining the intervals on which f is increasing and decreasing. And then we're going to find the local max and minima of f. Then we're going to analyze the second derivative and find the partition numbers for the second derivative. We're going to construct a sign chart for the second derivative and determine on the intervals on which the graph is concave up and concave down and find the inflection points of f. Then we're going to sketch graph of f, locate the intercepts, locate the max and minima, inflection points, and then sketch in what you know from steps one through three and plot additional points as needed to complete your graph. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. So hopefully with that, we can kind of figure out what we need to do. And again, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be just given some f of x. We're not going to be given a graph or anything. Well, of course, we can plot that in our calculator and figure out what it looks like exactly, but we're going to try it with just drawing from our derivatives, things like that. All right, so what we have is, uh, it says use the graphing strategy and analyze the function f of x equals x to the fourth plus four x cubed, state all the pertinent information and sketch a graph of f. All right, so I guess first things first, what is our domain? Okay, well, our domain is gonna be what? Well, anything we plug in here will work. So domain is gonna be anything from negative infinity to infinity. All right, so uh, next things next, uh, maybe let's let's do fun let's do our derivatives. So f prime of x is equal to what? Well, that's going to be a four x to the third plus a twelve x squared. F double prime, our second derivative, is going to be what? Well, that's going to be a twelve x squared plus a twenty four x. So those are pretty easy. Um, now, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's We're going to have to do some factoring here. So let's kind of think about all the different ways we can factor this. So let's look at the f of x factoring. And what can we do? Well, we can factor out an x cubed. And if we do that, we have x plus 4, right? And so if we set those equal to 0, we have x is equal to 0 and x is equal to a negative 4. Okay, and so here, these are odds, and so that means it's going to cross over uh, over the x-axis, cross over x-axis, and because it's a higher number than just 1, a 1, if we think about this, if we go back to our pre-calculus or college algebra, it's going to cross over and it's going to be almost a straight line is you know maybe it, that would be the best way because you know x equals two that would be what it is and so that would be kind of a straight line when you start getting higher powers what's going to happen is it's going to cross over but it's going to be crossing over and it's going to be more flat at that point point. and so with the cubed it's going to be crossing over and it's an odd number of times and so it's going to be kind of a flatter area at that point in place and where is it going to be well if x is zero guess what y is going to be zero so it's going to be crossing over at zero zero and it's going to be a little bit flatter than just straight across all right um here it's basically x is equal to four it's power of one so at negative four it's going to cross over two uh, across over the x-axis, it's going to be more linear across that point. Okay, so it's going to be more linear. It's going to be more like this one. And then what do we know about that point? It's going to be, you know, at x equals negative 4, it's going to be that. So it's going to be a negative 4, 0. Okay. All right, so that kind of gives us some idea about what f of x does, where it crosses over. So it's going to cross over at those two points. All right, so now we need to start finding partition numbers and, and flexion points. So now if we factor this one, what do we have? Well, uh, we're going to have, we can pull out, what, a 4x squared. And if we do that, we have, what, x uh, plus 3 
this one we can pull out what we can pull out a 12x it looks like and then we get x plus 2 okay so here we have a 0 and a negative 3 and here we have a 0 and a negative 2 so we'll have two sign charts we need to look at here the first one is negative 3 and 0 all right, so let's look at negative 4, and this will be a 0. That'll be a 0. Uh, let's do maybe, I don't know, a negative 1. Here we can do a 1. And then the other chart, and then this is going to be F prime. This is going to be F double prime. And so we have a 0 and a negative 2. And so maybe negative, uh, these would be 0 and 0. So we have a negative 3, maybe a negative 1, and a positive 1. Okay, so we've got our chart set up. Now we just have to plug in our values. And to save time, I've already plugged those values in. And so I found that it's going to be negative here. Then it's going to be positive, And then it's going to be negative. Okay. So here we know that our derivative is going to be decreasing on this area. It's going to be increasing on this area. And it's going to be decreasing on this area. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, sorry. This is going to be in plus. So that's going to be increasing at that place too. So it's increasing here as well. All right, so there's only one place where we're actually changing. And so that's a change in direction here. Okay. And so if it changes direction, if we're decreasing, and then all of a sudden we're increasing, what does that mean? That means we're going to have some kind of a local minima. Okay. And it's going to be at negative 3. And if we plug in negative 3, we're going to get a negative 27. So it's going to be way down on the graph. Okay, so our graph's going to be really, really lopsided, it looks like. Okay. All right, so now if we plug in uh, for on the double prime, if we plug in things, uh, it looks like over here it's going to be pluses. And when pluses, that means it's going to be concave up. And then we're going to have negatives here. So that means it's going to be concave down. And then it's going to be pluses again. And so that's going to be concave up again. And so what does that mean? Well, guess means we have an inflection point here as well as an inflection point here. So we have two inflection points. Okay. And one is at negative 2. We plug in negative 2, we get a negative 16. And the other one's at 0. And, well, we know that that's a 0. And that would make sense because we said it's going to be pretty flat there. And so that would indicate, you know, that might be an inflection point, And it actually is. So it's going to, you know, probably be, well, it's going from that to that. So we're going from concave down to concave up at that 0. Okay. All right, so now we've got all of these different things. So now let's see if we can draw a graph of what this should look like based on what we have here. All right, so let's see if we can draw this. And I think I'm going to have more in the negatives, so I'm going to worry more about where it's at at the negatives. All right, so we have something at negative 4. We've got a 0. We've got a negative 2, so we have something at negative 2 as well. And then our 0, and then it's going up. All right, so at negative 4, I know it's going to be a straight line across there, and it's going down, and so it's decreasing, and so it's going to be coming down straight across at that point. All right, now this one says at negative 3, which is you know right here, I'm going to have a local minimum. So that means I'm going to come down, I'm going to have a local minimum, and then I'm going to be coming back up after that. Okay, so that's some kind of a local minimum. Now, negative 2, what do I know? I have an inflection point, and it's going to go from concave up to concave down. So somehow I'm going to be able to draw an uh, inflection point that's coming up and doing something 
you know, at this point here, it's, I'm not getting a nice graph here. So let's, let's erase that and try to get it again. All right. So again, gr drawing these is going to be kind of hard. So I know I'm going to be coming up and then I'm going to be switching from concave up to kind of concave down at that negative two. Again, that's not a very good example, but then I know it's more flat at this region here. And so I'm going to have an inflection point and then I'm going to be coming up here and going concave up at that point here. Cause I'm not, I'm going to be concave up. So it really is coming down and then doing something like that. So I'm changing from concave up to concave down, then concave up again. So it's doing that at these different places. And again, I'm not a very good drawer, but that's what it would look like. Now let's see what it looks like if I can get it to show up on a calculator. All right, so I know that I'm going to maybe negative 10 to 10. That would probably be good enough. Now my why I know I need to go to probably maybe a negative 30 because I know a negative 27 is going to be one of my points. And maybe that would be okay. So now let's plug in the graph. So we're supposed to have x to the fourth. And then we're supposed to have plus 4x to the third. Now let's see if we get anything something like that. So yeah, we came down. We had our peak. We're switching over from concave up to concave down. And then we have a flat piece around that zero. And then we're going back to concave up and we're going upwards. So not exactly what I had drawn, but again, that's what it's supposed to look like. And and again, you know, it's kind of, it goes down, kind of flattens out. And then it goes up and flat across this spot here and then back up again. Okay. So again, that's what all the different pieces will tell you and it's just if can you make it look right in your actual drawing or not okay so that's how i would do this one uh let's come back for some more